The car you see behind me may look familiar, but it's actually something entirely brand new. And it's one of the most important new electric vehicles, well, maybe ever. I'm Patrick George, Editor-in-Chief of Inside EVs, and this is the Rivian R2. It's hard to overstate what an important car the R2 is for California-based startup Rivian. With a starting price tag around $45,000 before any tax credits, this is going to be their mainstream volume selling vehicle, and it's going to be the thing that takes them out of the super expensive segment that they've been in so far. You know, your average R1S or R1T, they're great cars, but they start around $70,000, $80,000. I mean, the last R1S I drove was well over $100,000. This is going to be something that's a lot more affordable for families out there while still being a great size. And the best part is, is that it keeps almost all of the looks that people love from the bigger Rivians. They made intentional choices to keep the design in the family. It looks like a shrunk down R1S. You know, you've got the, the LED lights here, the familiar bar, the badge and everything. You've got your tow hooks there. It's a really striking design. It looks so much like its bigger brother. I kind of didn't realize what it was until I walked into the building today. And I think that's a plus too. So many people love the R1S, but it's been pretty expensive until now. The R2 is a big deal underneath the skin. This is built on an entirely new Rivian platform that's also gonna underpin the compact R3 and R3X performance car. Those both stole the show a little bit at Rivian's big debut event earlier in March, but let's, let's not neglect the middle child either. This is really cool and really important of itself. It has a new battery pack. It's gonna come with two battery options, the top one, will have at least 300 miles of range. Like Rivian's before it, it comes in single, dual, and tri-motor configurations. And the top trim Rivian R2 is said to do zero to 60 in under three seconds. So you're gonna get the kids of that camping trip on time for sure. But you know, to get to that $45,000 base price, Rivian obviously had to make some compromises. Off-roaders should take note that this car does not include the air suspension that the R1S has, so it's not gonna raise and lower on command but it's got a good amount of ground clearance and with the right amount of tires, that's probably gonna do great for you off-road uh, in, in, in most circumstances. So if you love the Toyota 4Runner like I do, uh, you know that the back glass always has a way of opening by remote control and Rivian's ahead of the game here too. On the production models, this button right here is gonna open the back glass. So you can throw your surfboard, all your gear back there anytime you want, isn't that fun? I should stress that Rivian tells me that the production version of the R2 is not gonna look exactly like this. Like they're gonna tweak how this charging port door works. But underneath, we find a Tesla NACS plug. And this is, I believe, the first non-Tesla car to come equipped with a Tesla plug from the factory. And that means that this is gonna be native to using the Tesla supercharger network. It'll be open up to every Tesla supercharger that's out there and have a much slimmer, easier plug to use for fast charging than the big bulky CCS plugs that the Rivian cars use right now. It's wild to see a Tesla plug on a non-Tesla car, but that's the way everything's going in North America. You put that door back down there. And by the way, that is not a power door like the current R1S and R1T have. It's a manual open. So you must have noticed this by now, right? And this is a new option for the R2. This is what Rivian calls the treehouse. It's a tent hard shell camper that, that fits onto the top of the Rivian R2. It has a little bed inside and even has a movie projector that runs off the electricity generated by the car's batteries. Let's take a look up here and see what we're working with. Oh yeah, this is great. This is a great camping bed for like two people, maybe three if they're little kids. So you could get two or three people up there. You could get, you know, fold the seats down, have some more people camping in the back, have, you know, two, four, six, 12, and, you know, sleeping in it here is cheaper than rent in a lot of places. So I'm gonna definitely consider that in the next few years. So one of the highlights of the new Rivian R2 is that this has a completely new UX than what Rivian's been using before. And Brian from Rivian is gonna show us around a little bit. Hey Brian, how Hi. you doing today? Doing well, how are you? Doing good, man. So for this vehicle to show off the haptic system, which are these wheels on the steering wheel, um, we have a quick demo. So I'm gonna go ahead and just play you through this. And what you can do is it'll instruct you to put your hands on the wheels themselves. Okay, oh, and there we go. press them and engage and now You'll notice as it asks you to scroll through the system, just following the images. Um, oh, cute. It's got these, like, it like runs through the text while I spin the wheels up and down. Yeah. Our new steering wheel has wheels of its own with six-way control. Control start. Okay, cool. Interesting. So these wheels over here, they roll up and down, they pivot side to side, and they're buttons you press, right? Roll up, roll down, tilt left, tilt right. This is very clever. Push in, push out. Dynamic haptics, try it. Yeah, and I press it and it gives me a little little slight 
sort of vibration, right? The two button setup on the, the R1 series, I'll be honest, it's not my favorite interface, but this seems like a real upgrade in terms of like what it's capable of doing, you yeah. know, without, without having to take your, um, your hands over here or mess with a bunch of buttons over yeah. there. Eyes on the road, intuitive feedback, all that kind of stuff. So we can uh. exit and then it'll take us back to the home screen. And on the home screen, we have anywhere from navigation to music, similar to the existing R1, yeah. with some new images. One of the cool things that we have here that I really like, uh, because I've been car camping with my family, you can go to a nice super dark mode. Oh, I love so you're this. You're not gonna have your eyes, you know, night blindness where you look at a really bright screen. Um, and then we can obviously just come back to normal. And you'll actually see the R2 with the tent on it that is on display right now. These animations are great too. Like I, I love the artwork here that you're using now. Other way. Other way, okay, there yeah. we go. Oh, cool, yeah, great graphics. Like the current car, and this is a Different. This is a bigger screen than we see in the, the R1 they series, are right? Slightly different sizes. Yeah. This is narrower, better tied to your field of view through the steering wheel. The other one is slightly shorter and wider, um, but very similar in size. And this UX is this represents basically what the customer is going to get in two years, more or less. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's going to some... be a lot of evolution with it. We yeah. Clearly, have two years of development, and it's something that, as you guys know, with the R1, we've continued to change over time. So yeah. Not everything on here is responsive. Not all the buttons work. Uh, we just wanted to give you a flavor of what it would be like. Right on. Yeah. And then we've got the different drive modes here: all terrain, snow, things like that to adjust. You know. Yeah. This looks great. I mean, this is a really lovely interface, and the, the, I think the graphics are pretty world class. Like you don't you don't see stuff that looks this cool on a lot of yeah, car screens. The team's really excited about showcasing more of you know, modern design, continuing to keep it fresh and exciting for people. So you've seen the outside of the Rivian R2 and it looks a lot similar to the Rivian R1 series but scaled down. I'd say there's quite a bit more additional tweaks uh, on the interior of this car. One of the big ones is that the R1S and R1T got criticized because they didn't have a glove box. This one has one and I think two, if I get to open, there we go. Two glove boxes. So like for folks who weren't too happy that their R1 series didn't have any glove boxes, well, I hope you want a lot of gloves. You got plenty of places to put them now, which is really exciting. It's a really um, upscale looking interior. You know, this is a much more affordable car than the R1 series is, but it doesn't feel as, as stripped down or as, I hate to say it cheap, as like a Tesla Model Y or Model 3 does. Sorry, Tesla fans. I mean, deep down, you know, it's true. For a car that they say is going to start at $45,000, there's some really nice touches here, like the speaker built into the dashboard right there. These soft touch materials are nice. Both of these displays are lovely. I really like this narrow one that is right in front of the steering wheel, but doesn't obscure the view of the road. This center display is really gorgeous, too. Like, the graphics are excellent here. The updated UX is obviously kind of a, it's a demo version. It's not 100% what a customer is going to get, but it, it kind of demonstrates what the, where they want to go with this and, and what it's ultimately going to look like. All in all, uh, yeah, this is a really nice interior. And I think that these wheel controls are going to be really interesting to use and operate on the road. There's nothing else like these out there on any car right now. And I think that if you had this wheel to control your volume and your menu functions and this one, maybe do something like your cruise control, adaptive driving systems, you know, this could be a really good setup for people. You've got this really beautiful panoramic roof up top. It's kind of obscured by the tent up there too, but this is a great piece of glass. Very simplified, but not cheap. And I'd say these seats feel very comfortable too. But the best part is that second row right back, they fold all the way down. So yes, you can sleep in this car if you're camping or you just need a nap somewhere. So that's a great feature. It really fits with the sort of outdoorsy vibe and mission that Rivian always goes for. And it's a good size. Your view of the road, where you sit in this thing, it doesn't feel as overwhelmingly large as the Rivian R1 series did. And some people really like that. I live in New York City. Parking your Rivian R1S is not the most fun thing you're gonna do with your day. Looks promising, right? Yeah, I'd agree. But now for the bad news, which is that the Rivian R2 isn't even gonna go into production until the first half of 2026. And we all know that EVs have a way of often getting delayed on their path to actually being on the roads. Plus, in the first 24 hours of this car being revealed, Rivian tells me 68,000 people put down deposits on this car. And that was about a month ago. Plus, they're prioritizing Rivian R1S and R1T owners to get these cars first. So if you want one, you might be waiting a while. But if Rivian can really deliver this car on time with the specs it's promising, at the price it's promising, this really could be a game changer in the EV market. And it's something that could turn this company into a long-term going concern and not just a scrappy startup. I'm excited to see where it goes next, and I think a lot of people are too. Thanks so much for watching, and rest assured that we have a lot more videos coming to Inside EVs soon too, so smash that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you want the full download, go to InsideEVs.com and check us out on Instagram, Facebook, Threads, 
X, and anywhere else you might get your news.